What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 10-7 MMA Podcast. This is our inaugural episode. My name is Dino, DS, a.k.a. MMA Youngboy, and I'm here with my good pal and my fellow Dino, Dino Bam Bam. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in. If you could do us a favor, like and subscribe, please, and of course, follow us on Instagram at the 107 MMA. That's the number seven. So the 10 number seven MMA on Instagram. We'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got a great show for you today. Um, we first of all, obviously, wanted to dive into some general MMA news. There are some fights that were announced that we wanted to briefly touch on. Obviously, Conor McGregor is back in the news, as he's known to do. Um, and we also, the, the whole kind of point of the episode today is really we wanted to do something that we're calling the state of the divisions. Uh, and basically, just, we just kind of wanted to go into all the different weight classes and given that it's early in the year, you know, just kind of give a primer for yeah. what to expect, you know, who are the real contenders, um, and, and just generally, you know, what we think this year can bring. Maybe we'll give some predictions as far as, like, uh, you know, who's who we think is going to be champ at each weight class by the end of the year, yeah. um, things like that. But, Dino, why don't you just get us started right away with some MMA news. Yeah, so first and foremost, the Conor McGregor thing. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I guess Conor McGregor was on his bike this morning. Yeah. And was hit by a car. Yeah. He has a big gash on his butt or whatever the case is. He put that up on Instagram. I don't know what you make of this, but to me, it just seems sort of like staged. Yep. It seems like we get Connor in the news every two, three days. And especially now with the Ultimate Fighter news kind of coming out or, you know, yeah. the rumors of that coming out. It just seems like Connor being Connor to me and just kind of something on, you know, something in the media for people to talk about. It. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, especially with the boat incident, you know, we don't have to dive it too much into yeah. that. Um, I do think that it's very, very possible that, you know, he's just kind of detracting from, but, but also, like, I could, you know, things happen, right? Like, he he absolutely could have been, he does like to bike, as yeah. we've seen. Right, we've seen that. It, right, you know, Max Holloway likes to skateboard, and Conor McGregor likes to bike. Those are the two those modes are, of transportation for the two fighters that I know. Those, and Those should be new mythical fighters, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yep um yeah man i think you know i think you're right if it, it very well could be i think it's probably realistically if we're being just you know honest with ourselves i think it's probably more than anything um just a convenient distraction i don't know that he fabricated it but you know who knows i guess why not right yeah keep your name relevant um besides that as far as uh, some random news is concerned actually nick diaz is supposedly going to be in a jean-claude van damme movie that's, yep. I'm down. I love I'm that. I'm down. Anytime you get a Diaz brother yeah. involved in something crazy, I'm down for I'm it. I'm shocked it's not Nate, though. Like, I, I'm right. not taking anything away from Nick, but... I feel like if Nick's there, Nate's going to make a cameo. You think? That's just what I assume. You, but you, th you would think... I don't know. I feel like Nate... Like, am I wrong? I feel like Nate's the bigger star, though. Like, he's he the is. bigger draw. Uh, now. Now. A couple well, years sure. ago, no, it was Nick. Yeah. No, no. Years ago, like... Yeah. Nick is a UFC, like... Original legend. He's right, an OG exactly. legend. Seriously. So, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I'm down. I'm gonna I love it. it. My only thing is, like, uh, I'm very curious to... That's an interesting combination for me because yeah. I love Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I love Nick Diaz, too, you know? Um, very different guys in terms of when I think Nick Diaz, yeah. I think downers. Yeah, very chill. Very, I think yeah. he smokes, he's smoking a lot of weed. Yeah. And then Jean-Claude, yeah. Jean you know, he likes uh, <laughs> a little something a little bit different. Do you know that for a fact? Oh, oh my God! Yeah. yeah, it's like that's like asking if Oscar De La Hoya right. okay. partakes. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take your word. For so it. that's cool, though. I'm like, down. Yeah, I'll, you know. I'll watch it. Yeah, oh, I'll I'll def I'm definitely you know tuning in. I'm yeah, tuning in. absolutely. Um, besides that, just some fight news, really quickly. Joe Pfeiffer, Gerald Mearshart got booked. Joe I'm Body down. Bags. Joe Body Bags. I'm I'm down. That's a good fight. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Just briefly, we don't have to go too I mean, far into it. I think I think it's perfect for Gerald Mearshart to kind of just stop you know stop the ascent of like another sure. upcoming guy sure that, that's what it looks like to me Gerald Mearshart is legit it. man he, he is legit he is. in that weight class you know obviously the Hamza fight doesn't show anything but no yeah. it doesn't but like you know it took to the casual right it took a lot away I feel like yeah you for, know? Sure, for yeah. sure um we have Dan Hooker and uh the tarantula Jalen Turner that should be a really is it Jalen or Jalen I think it's Jalen Turner. Okay, because that's think. what I always say, but I've heard people say Jalen. I'm gonna go with Jalen until yeah. I'm corrected, but whatever. That should be a banger. I love that fight. I'm a big 
Jalen Turner guy. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big fan of guys who are like who are considered weight bullies. Yeah. To be honest, and we'll get into that again later when we talk sure. about some of the champs. Um, but yeah, I, I love I love how he fights. Um, I think it's a great fight. I'm excited for it. Dan Hooker is not. You know, it's, he's no joke. Obviously, he's right. fought at all, he's fought at heavyweight. He's fought you know at all all kinds of weight yeah, classes. So, wild. and you know, if you look at his resume, he's literally fought the best of the best. Yeah. So, and has he had some brutal losses? Absolutely. But I'm excited for that fight. Yeah. But at the same time, he has those. He has good wins, right? Like absolutely. We were talking about before the before we were recording this. He beat Gilbert Burns. Yeah. At, at 155, but still, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I had forgotten about that. Yeah. You reminded me. That's so. impressive. Um, besides that, we got. Game bread and Durinho, Jorge Masvidal, yeah. and Gilbert Burns got set up. What was that? What was that like announcement? By the way, that was I don't know Dana being crazy. Just, I think I think they were trying to like hype us up for Conor McGregor news. Yeah. On in, or, I'm sorry, on YouTube they had like eleven or twelve thousand people live like watching it. Sure. Waiting thirty minutes. They were thirty minutes late. They're always usual. late. Yeah. They're always late. Pretty yeah. usual. But then they were also live on Instagram. They were live on Twitter. Yeah. They were live everywhere, but yeah, so all they did was announce, not all they did, it's, it's pretty big news, but Gilbert Burns and Masvidal, which yep. should be an absolute banger for MMA fans, and then the rematch between Alex Pajera and Israel Adesanya, yep. which in itself should be uh, Just briefly, yeah. give me your thoughts on those two fights. By the way, this man watches more mixed martial arts than anybody else I know. Yeah. The only person that may potentially watch more than you is yeah. actually related to, it's your mom. So, and I'm not joking. Really? The last time we went to an MMA to get event, or I saw him at an MMA event, you have, or it was, yeah, yeah, it wasn't UFC, it was Bellator. Bellator, yeah. Um, it was when uh, Vadim and Corey Anderson were fighting. Yeah. And, the tri- yeah. Uh, Pitbull and yeah. Umar, or Pitbull and the Nurmagomedov brother. Yeah. Was forgetting There's Cameron. a lot of them. Yeah, I can't fault you for it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw you there, and you were there, obviously, with your mom, mm-hmm. and she was, she's not a casual. She's no, into she, it. She's, she's in that, really and she's it. excited, and yeah, she's, she's. She gets upset. Yeah, oh, yeah. She, dude, she's she's as big an MMA fan as yeah. I know, which is wild. That's awesome. Um, but which fights were you asking me about? The, uh, the Masvidal and Durinho, and also yeah, um, and the Pajeda, the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. rematch. As far as uh, Masvidal and Gilbert Burns is concerned, I think if Gilbert Burns stays the Gilbert Burns we just saw against Neil Magny, and he stays safe. And he's willing to wrestle and not go out there and put on like a yeah. war or a fight for the fans. He does that, man. You never know, know which which version you're gonna get. That, that's like, the thing. I feel like, yeah, he, we talked like, about he'll that play mostly. it. Yeah, we did. He'll play it safe. Yeah. But then if you're banging, he'll bang. Yeah, that, that's you know? Gilbert Burns. Yeah. Um, I think if we get a safe Gilbert Burns, then I think he just takes Masvidal down and he's able to submit him. Like Colby was able to sit on top of Masvidal for the entirety of the fight. Yeah. I think if Burns wants to do that, he'll find a submission. Um, but if he wants to sit there and bang with Jorge Masvidal, there's a chance he goes out. Yeah. There's a chance he gets sparked. Um, I don't see it, though. Me, I really don't see either. it. Me either. I think, I think we get a safe Gilbert Burns. So, for now, I'm picking Gilbert Burns, and we'll talk more about that yeah. as it comes up. And then the fight with uh, with Adesanya yeah. and, uh, and Alex Pereira, it's hard to say, right? Because we've seen them fight three times across different sports, and Alex Pereira has come out on top every time. Mm-hmm. But it's it's kind of like the Moreno and Figueredo situation that we, we've seen play out over the last few years. It's like Adesanya's winning My boy. the fight. Your boy. Adesanya's winning the fight until yeah. he's not. Every time. Yeah. It's like the, one of them was a robbery, and then twice he got knocked out while winning. Yeah. My, my heart the, wants the, to say Israel Adesanya. My mind is sort of leaning towards Pajeda for now. Yeah, but again, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I guess. What do you think? I think Alex Pereira finishes him again. Again? Yeah, I really maybe, do. Maybe, maybe he's just got his number. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think people people make a lot more of that than it. Nec- I mean, you know, I, I I think there might be something to that. Like he has, a, but I just think he's got a, a lot more power, man. And he does. I think he, you know, he he kind of forces. Is he to have to fight like how he used to fight when he was coming up and be a little bit more aggressive and actually throw strikes and kicks and, you know, actually try to hurt, you know, put a hurting on him? Right. Um, he had him wobbled, though. I mean, he had him wobbled. End was it the first, first? Round. Yeah, yeah, first round, yeah. He had him wobbled bad. I mean, but, man, he's got a chin, but so does Izzy. But, you know, was it an early stoppage, wasn't it? And, I, you know, one thing I didn't love is, like, just hearing Izzy talk about yeah. Like do his round of interviews after. I thought it was a little 
pathetic almost, you know? It's sure. like, dude, the, the you, Helwani interview wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the best look for him. Yeah. Yeah. Just real quick, completely unrelated, but mm-hmm. I think we should touch on it. Did you see the Jamal Hill? First of all, congrats sweet to dreams. my to my boy, sweet dreams, sweet dreams Jamal Hill. Let's, That's let's my cheers to that. Let's cheers to, that. Cheers to him. Good no, job. seriously. Like I expect, I I think we talk when we talk about. I told you, I think he's gonna win. Mm-hmm. I did not expect him to win that dominant. No, I didn't either. And we'll definitely get into that as yeah. we get to our two hundred five portion of. Yeah. Uh, of this, you know, of the state of the divisions that we're going to have. But Jamal Hill looked awesome. And, and he always does, to be fair. He always does. He's never looked bad. The one loss was uh, getting his arm snapped. And, and he tapped. didn't He didn't tap. He my didn't my tap, boy yeah. didn't tap, dude. He don't tap. Yeah. He's ready to, He. I mean, he's literally, like, he's ready to die, right? Like, he's like, snap my arm. I'm not yeah, tapping. Let's get it. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, I, I think he's a specimen of a human being, even though he's, like, skinny fat, kind of. Yeah, he's got, like, um, dad bod. I feel like he should be, like, just get more jacked, bro. You got this, you know? Like, put on a couple pounds of muscle, drop a couple pounds of fat, like, you're a champ. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway, and then, yeah, just just to recap, I do think Pajero is going to, is it Pereira or Pajero? Pajero. Yeah, he's going to knock him out, I think, so. Well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that, obviously, when we yeah. get to yeah. that point. Um. Should we just dive into this? Yeah, let's dive in. Give them a quick breakdown. Uh, how we're gonna start? I, th- I think we yeah. decided we're gonna start with the uh, with the women's correct weight yeah, classes first. first. Um, you know, not to not to be this guy. We're not gonna spend that much time on the women's weight classes. And, and it's just because there's not too much to talk about. That, that's the reason. I don't there's... know if that's just because. <laughs> well, whatever you know. There, <laughs> but but really, there isn't too much. No, nah, there really is't. Yeah. So. I guess we'll start at women's straw weight 115. Yeah, you lead it off, my friend. All right, cool. So we have the the new champion, and again, Zhang Wei Li. That's um, my girl, for real. To me, you know, she she showed that. I know she has two losses to, to Rose, who everybody loves. Like, yeah. I love Rose Namunas. I know a lot of people do. But she's kind of shown, besides those two fights, I guess, that she is the best, uh, the best straw weight in the game. Yeah. And, and the reason I say that is because... That last fight between Rose Namunas and Carla Esparza, I was there at UFC 274 in Phoenix. Oh, boy. Hey. That was a... That was... Dude. A banger. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst fight I've ever seen in my life, and I had the honor of being there live. Yeah. Midway through the round, we had people, like, holding up their cell phones, doing this thing, like, flashing the lights. Mm-hmm. We had the wave going on in the crowd. Yeah. And the weirdest... At a UFC event. That's crazy. At a UFC event. And the weirdest thing about it, like, looking back in retrospect, was the fact that right before that, we have Michael Chandler killing Tony Ferguson. Oh, yeah, dude. I remember you texting me. I remember me texting you, like, yeah. holy shit. What a fight to be at. It was Unbelievable. Wild. Kick this dude's head off. Then we have 25 minutes of these two circling each other. Yeah. And then we get Oliveira and Gaethje, which was wild. Um, what's the deal with Rose and what do you What do you think? I don't know, man. Um... I know you like Thug Rose. Like, yeah. You you, you yeah. like her a lot. Um, she's obviously really good. You know, I know she's beat Whaley. The second time was obviously yeah, it was iffy. Uh, yeah. It was iffy. It was close. Yeah. And even the head kick, it's like, dude, it's a it's a flash head kick. Right. So, and I'm and I, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I hate when people say, "Oh, you got lucky." You got caught, or she got so, caught. So, or like Leon. Man. Leon was lucky, right? right. Like. So then every flash KO is lucky. That's that's bullshit. Right. I, I don't like that. I don't like that um, no, I, I'm like with you, frame of mind at all, you know? So I'm not even saying that, but it's like, you, you could just get caught. You're a human being. You're yeah. built of flesh and bones. Right. Like, it's going to happen at some It's going to happen if you get caught clean on accident, like, you yeah. know? So I don't put too much weight in that. Honest to God, I think seven out of ten times, six out of ten times at least, let's say, I yeah. would say Whaley wins that fight. And sure. and then now, especially it's like and we got the two that Rose would win, right? Yeah, like it happened. Before. Right. Yeah. It had yeah. To be that there, I and also, like I just think Whaley, like, dude, this is her whole life. Like you can see that, you can yeah. feel that. Like it's it's not a question of her determination yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, Rose just got tapped out by. Yeah, I was gonna ask. You, you saw that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who was it? Um, Julian Robertson. Julian Robertson. Thank yeah. you. Yes. So. 
And also, just coming off that boring ass fight, and then and then getting tapped out, and it's like it's I don't know. Look. I don't know. It's not. And then, did you see Rose's interview after the Jillian Robertson thing? No, dude. She looked like she was making excuses. Was she? Like she was clearly just like making excuses about it. She's embarrassed. Yeah, she was yeah. mentioning like, oh, Pat lost, and then like, oh, this and that. and it was just like, dude, like Pat. Like, Pat Barry. Yeah, Pat Barry was on the card before her. Who like, gives a shit? Right. It's like it's grappling. <laughs> okay. Pat Barry's out. not good. He didn't, he didn't, <laughs> so. it's, it, who cares? Yeah. It's not like he got knocked yeah, out yeah. like you're worried about Yeah, him. yeah. He, like, okay. he lost a seven minute decision. He had a bad grappling. day at work. <laughs> yeah, like, you know? Yeah, yep. Um, I don't know, man. I just feel like I feel like she's afraid of Carla Esparza. And I don't want to put Carla Esparza down, but she's not good to me. Like, I don't see No, Carla she's Esparza. not yeah, good. I think she's... I think Amanda Lemos fucks her out. Yeah. I think Marina Rodriguez is um, a better fighter. Yeah. I, I mean, mean... Definitely on the jiu-jitsu side, right? Like... I think Mackenzie Dern probably taps her out. Like... Dude... Mackenzie I mean, Dern, though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why we're not going to dive too deep into <laughs> That's where we are. True. So, uh, real quick, last thing I want to mention on this, and if you got anything, throw it in. Uh, Jessica Andrade just fought Lauren Murphy. I know that yep. was at flyweight. Your girl. She, she Your girl, Lauren Murphy. My, my girl, Jessica Andrade. True. But I like Lauren Murphy. She's a nice Jessica. fella. Um, But Jessica Andrade beat the hell out of Lauren Murphy. Yeah. And I know that's at 25, but her ranking at 15 went down a couple I saw, spots. Yeah, you, yeah, I saw that. I mean... I don't know what to make of that, but Jessica Andrade deserves a title shot to someone. Yeah, and it, yeah, and the drop is weird because it's like who's mo- who's like who's done anything. Well, she got jumped by Marina Rodriguez and Yan Zhanan. Whatever. Sure. Should we move on to twenty five? Please, for All the right. love of God. So twenty five uh, women's flyweight, one hundred twenty five pounds. Valentina Shevchenko. Yeah, queen, girl. My girl for sure. Yeah. The queen of the division, one of the goats of uh, women's MMA for sure. MMA. She's terrifying, man. She's dope, dude. Is this the year, Dino, where we finally see Valentina slip, or is she starting to slip? Is she slipping? I think, I think, I think it's really tough to be, and especially in a sport like this, the greatest sport in the world. Right. But in a sport like this, where it's always one on one, right? I think it's really tough to be so dominant for so long. Yeah. I think it's. Going to come down at some point, obviously. Right. It's logical. What but, um, yeah, man, I mean, her last fight, she looked beyond beatable. Beyond yeah. beatable. Yeah. And not that it was like, you know, like a spectacular fight or anything. Yeah. Alexa Grasso is legit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's worrying. Um, I she's got, got great boxing. Yep. You know, yeah, I just, I still don't see it though. Like, yeah. I, is, is Alexa, Alexa Grasso is not going to grapple down Tina. Yeah, I, like, I think and, and, and I don't see her sparking her out. Here, here's my question, right? Yeah. I, to me, right now, and maybe I'm in that mindset of Valentina Shevchenko's the goat. She is the goat. Women's MMA, but I don't see Alexa Grasso beating her. Does she defend again this year? So let's say she beats Grasso. But that's March or April. Well, it's really early. It's March. It's, right? a, it's March fourth. Yeah. It's the John Jones card. March fourth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if she beats her. Maybe she fights again in like October, November. Hmm. I mean, I'm looking down the list, and honestly, besides some of these, besides Casey O'Neill, who's kind of just like moving her way up, and I guess Tyler Santos, who, you know, had that really close fight with her. Yeah, Valencia, where'd she know. come from, huh? Who? Tyler Santos. Man, she, she's, a, she's, she's a good fighter, man. but... She looked great that day. I, yeah. I honestly, when I was watching it live, I thought she won the fight. I, I thought, thought I thought so too, man. I thought she won. I was happy when Valentina got the decision, but I don't really see anyone besides those two kind of dethroning her. Yeah. And I don't think it's this year, but it's probably next year. You know what I mean? Yep. Um. Besides that, like I just mentioned, King Casey, King Casey O'Neill. Yeah, she's I, legit. I think she's. I think she's gonna make a lot of. She's gonna make a lot of noise this year, and I wouldn't be shocked to see her in that top three. To be honest with you, by, yep. the, by the start of next year, I agree. Potentially even being booked for a title shot by the time the year's done for early next year. Mm, okay, oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Sure, maybe not fighting for the title yeah. this year. Yeah, especially because a lot of these girls don't fight that often. So, what what do you make of Jessica Andrade though? What do you what do you think? Where did she get her title shot? Fifteen or twenty five? <sighs> Man, first come first serve. I mean, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. I guess she's probably better off at 
I don't know, man. No. I mean, it's tough. Like, yeah. I, I would think at this point she's probably better off at 25. I mean, she looks small at 25. Like, she, she does. She dominated Laura Murphy, but... She does. Yeah. But I think... I think that this like that fight was like she's gonna move forward and with with I think that's the goal, right? Like, she said she's ready to go for both. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, whatever. You know, yeah. good luck to Jessica Andrade. She definitely deserves. The she. Title. I think Jessica Andrade hits like a dude, and she is skill level wise beyond, and skill level and power and like actual yeah. technique wise beyond ninety nine percent of. See, to me, she's the best. Non-champion right now. Sure, yeah, dude, she's a goat of of, of the women's that's what, that's what division I'm I don't think in general. She's respect. a women's goat. Like she's. I don't no. think she gets that respect. You re- really? I mean, who else, man? I mean, she's like. I think if you were to like right now, if we were to get a Rose Namajunas Jessica Andrade trilogy fight, right? Yeah, it would be the third one. Who would you have? Because I'm picking Jessica Andrade at this. Point. I mean, in this moment right now, yeah. I would say Andrade, but man, that just sounds crazy. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on. Uh, we're going to go to women's bantamweight. There's not too much to talk about here. Amanda Nunes, the actual GOAT when it comes yeah. to women's MMA. Double champ Amanda Nunes. Um, she's she's refusing. Or I guess she refused to fight Irene Aldana. Why? She said that Irene Aldana Doesn't and Juliana, deserve it. Irene Aldana and Junia, Juliana Pena should fight, should fight each other yeah. and... They both need a win to fight her. Yeah. Juliana Pena is refusing to fight unless it's for the title. And you were telling me that Irene Aldana just got booked with Raquel, uh, Raquel Pennington. Pennington. March 25th, yeah. Yeah. I just think it's a... F- I think it's a joke that Juliana Pena thinks that she's somebody who can right. like demand yeah. a title fight. Chicago's own Juliana Pena. No, I mean, sure. You know, I get all that. You know, and that's fine. <laughs> I just... I just think it's... Like, okay, just think about some of the yeah. men's fighters who have never gotten the title shot or who got yeah. one title shot. Yeah. And because it's so stacked, like, mm-hmm. Juliana Pena already... is is great, man. Like, good for her. Like, she's been, you know, hot and cold and throughout her career. But, like, she got hot at the right time. And, man, she beat the hell out of her. She beat the hell out of Amanda yeah. Nunes in their first fight. And that's awesome. I, I'm not taking anything away from that. I just think... You are not in the position to demand a title shot at this point. Yeah, I, I and may, but maybe you are because you know there's not that many women's fighters that are you know there's not that on many that level. Champions. You're right. Right. Like Irene Aldana and Raquel Pennington. Obviously, that's a huge fight for this division. Um, you know who's gonna win that? I don't pretend to even try to predict I women's Aldana. fights at this point. I would think yeah. Aldana too, but yeah. you know, um, Ketlin Vieira is pretty legit. You know, I mean, it's just. I just think at the end of the day, this division, since we're talking about the state of the the, the division, yeah. right, in the long term or in the next year, let's say, you know, I just think that there's really nothing to it. Amanda, the lioness, Nunez, yeah. is the GOAT. She's the champ. I don't know what happened that first fight. I think I, I, think, I, she, I, I, I think she underestimated. I was just going to say yeah. that. I really do think that it's a classic case of she straight up underestimated this girl. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she ever expected her to bang with her. Same. And then Juliana Pena just smelled blood in the water, and when she saw it, she's like, oh, I'm landed some of these, yeah. and was just swinging, and I mean, hell, I mean, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I think, what is there to say, really? Do you see Holly Holm, Ketlin Vieira, no. Irene Aldana, even Raquel Pennington, do you see any of these chicks, No. like, and, and sniffing and the and title? And There's and no an, chance. And it's an older division, by the way. There's yeah. not much young blood at, at 135. No, nah, there so. isn't. I just, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we're going to look back on this division, and I would say 90% chance that Amanda Nunes is the champion by the end of the year. Yeah. They also don't fight very often. Juliana Pena is the only other person that I think is even in the conversation at this point. Yeah. I think it's kind of silly that she's demanding a title fight. I mean, so then what's going to happen? Is Juliana Pena going to fight the winner of Aldana and, and Pennington, or, are they, or is the winner of that just going to get a title shot? Right. And this girl, and, and Juliana Pena is left know. out to dry. We'll see how much the UFC likes Juliana Pena. I think they like her a lot, especially, you know, you know not to be this guy, but she's decent looking. And, and, and she fills a market. As an MMA her. fighter yeah. in that weight class, <laughs> it's slim pickings. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, we, we also didn't go over this, but I just want your uh, quick opinions on women's 115 and 125. Who do you see being the, ch- being the champion at the end of the year? Women's 115 and 125. Yeah. I mean... 
So for me, I mean, I still think Valentina is going to be the champ. I think for the women's divisions, one fifteen to one forty five, we get the same. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it changes. Yeah, sir. yep, I don't think so either, man. Yeah. Okay. I really don't. So, so uh, there's really not much to talk about there, honestly. Yeah. Amanda Nunes is, I think the distance between Amanda Nunes, all things considered, the distance between her and the rest of the field, even mm-hmm. Juliana Pena, realistically. What about Valentina and Amanda? That's the only fight. That fight. That's the only to, fight yeah. I want to see again. Yeah. That's the Amanda Nunes beat her twice. Yeah, but one of them's like one of them. One of them was really yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, that's that's literally the only fight I want to see, mm-hmm. and I think Valentina is trending down. You know. Yeah. And she already lost the other two. Yeah. So we might already like know the answer to that. But we, I mean, Amanda actually lost. But Amanda did actually lose. You're right. Yeah. That's the only fight I actually truly want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm down, and as far as women's 145 is concerned, that's not a real division. At this point, it's yeah. just a trophy for Amanda Nunes to have, right? Yep. Um, let's move on to the guys. Men's flyweight, 125 pounds. We have a new champion. Uh, and again. Yeah. When's right? the last time you weighed 125 pounds in your life? I want to know. Fifth grade? Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing. If, I oh, you, yeah. you, you, <laughs> I don't know. Fifth grade? I don't know. My guy, I was probably about buck 80 minimum in hey, fifth grade. Right. Are you out of your I've mind? I've been a big guy for a while, so I don't know. Child. I was like the same size I am right now in like fifth grade. Born that are watching. Let's say that. Don't say that, but yeah. But yeah, so anyways, men 125 flyweight. We have a new champion, Brandon Moreno. My boy. Just finished off the quadrilogy with Davidson Figueredo. A little bit uh, a little bit of weirdness, I guess, in, in, in the end of that fight. Sure. Kind of sucked to see it go down that way. Sure, it did. Uh, I told you he was going to finish him, though. I, I was you confident did. that, that uh, Moreno would get the finish. You did, but that, that's not the finish you want. No, it's absolutely like, not. I, I don't Davison think it's the finish that he wanted, either. I wanted Davison to win that fight, and I know you yeah. wanted Moreno to win that fight. Whatever. I mean, if Brandon Moreno wins, Brandon Moreno wins. Like It, it is what it is. I just wanted more of a definitive ending to that. Yeah. Um. As far as, you know, so Figgy's leaving the division. We have Moreno, who promised Pantoja the next title shot. What do you make of that fight? Pantoja's beat him twice. What do you think? I think he's got a, a, a very realistic chance of beating him again. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I. you know Brandon Moreno is my guy. Mm-hmm. My favorite in, fighter in the division by far. I cried like a little baby when he won oh, the title on. for the first yeah. time. I dead ass cry, I had goosebumps everywhere. I cried like a baby. Um. I would put my money on Moreno. Okay. But it's what are, I mean. What are the odds on that? I don't know if they. There's no way they even probably uh, release them. Yeah, they've got to be a pick them. And if not, I don't think Pantoja will be favored. You know, I think which is wild considering he's beat him twice. He has. You know. He has, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, I. I just. I think it's fifty fifty. To be honest, I yeah. want to see Moreno win. I do think I it's fifty fifty. Yeah. I think the last time we saw Pantoja and Moreno go at it, it was clearly a different Brandon Moreno. Like, that's obvious. Yeah. You would assume it's a different Alexander Pantoja. Um, I guess we'll just see what happens in that fight when it does go down. I'm excited for that. Um, besides that, I mean, I, I just want to mention some names towards the bottom of that top 15. Mm-hmm. And um, Makayev. Yes. And besides him, I want to mention Manel Kopp. I yep. know that that's more of like a personal favorite. Obviously, yeah. everyone's talking about Mohamed Makayev, and he's ranked number 12 right now. Yeah, he's he's going to be... We're going to see him in the top five yeah. by the end of the year. I didn't realize... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I I would think Oscar Oscarov would be ranked higher, too. But Well, uh, he mentioned that he's retiring. So, I don't, oh, know that's how, right. I don't know how sure that is. The UFC removed him from their rankings, yeah. and I think that's probably why he's so that's right. on there. I don't buy it. I think he's coming back at some point. Yeah. But... Whatever, you know, it, mm. it is what it is. As far as he's concerned, if he does come back, he's right back in that mix. 100%. I think you're right, though. Yeah. We're talking about the state of the division. I think the most interesting thing that's happened to this, this division is Figgy leaving. Yeah. You know, I think that really changes the dynamic. And thank God, as much as I love Moreno, I do not you don't want to come anywhere right. near these two guys fighting again. Right. And honestly, it's pro- it was it probably, if, they, if he stayed in the division, it's bound to happen. Yeah. He doesn't want to make the weight cut. I get it, you know? I mean, and, and if you look at it this way, Figgy beat Pantoja. Yeah. And then Pantoja's beat Moreno twice. Yeah. So, like... And Moreno's beat Figgy. Right. So, yeah. we're just kind of... We'd be sitting there. We're, we're doing UFC like, math. Like, yeah, yeah. Dude. And it's like, whatever. 
Brandon Moreno is the new champ right now. He's got Pantoja. We'll see how that ends up. You, you assume those guys are fighting August or September. Yep. And I don't see them defending again after that. So for me, I do have Alexander Pantoja as my champion at the end of the year. Wow. Okay. I mean, he has Brandon Moreno's number is the way I see it. So to me, he's the champion at the end of the year. I think we get Makayev in the top five. Easily. With a potential of Manel Kopp being there as well. Uh, I'll mention, you know, we still have Roy Ball. We still have Kaikara France, who are like towards the top of this division. Yep. Amir Albazi, who's kind of hot right now. Um, I really like Amir, Amir, Amir Albazi. He's a jiu-jitsu guy, you know? Yeah. Like, dominant jiu-jitsu. And, and we'll just see, I guess, where that gets you in the division. Yep. Yep. Who do you yeah. think's the champ at the end of the... My boy, Brandon Moreno. December 31st, you think we're looking at... The assassin baby. Yeah, what about Mateus Nicolau? I like Mateus Nicolau. And does he have a fight schedule? I don't He think isn't he does not have a fight schedule. Okay, yeah. Him and have him and Brandon Royval fought yet? Let's see. Uh, I don't believe they have. I'm, I'm I don't think right they now. have either. I didn't like his last performance, I'm gonna be honest with you. You're talking about uh, versus Matt Chanel? Yeah. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, he was just I mean he he ended up finishing him. But he was just kind of yeah, like ground, circling was, around. It was like very yeah, defensive. It was. And it, and it annoyed me personally. Yeah, no, I get but, that. Yeah. But I mean, but, I I mean dude, but right. yeah, absolutely. But just a real quick, Matthias Nikolau, his last four wins, Matt Chanel, David Dvorak, Tim Elliott, and Manel Kat. And Manel Kat, those were all top 20 fighters in the division. What was easily. The, the Manel Kat was that, that was the split decision. That was the split decision. I think that went Manel Kat's way. I thought so too. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. I don't see him getting a title shot this year. Maybe no, no, I, no. Year. I don't. I don't see it either. Um, There's so many people ahead of him, right? Like Pantoja, we know is getting the title shot. Yeah. I would assume Kaikar France wins one. They give him, uh, you know, if I'm sorry, Pantoja wins and Kaikar France wins. Yeah. That's a good fight. That's a great fight. That would be. That would be um, a great fight. Yeah. Yeah, I still think it'd be Moreno at the end of the year. Uh, I hope he stays active. Um, yeah, I mean. The division, it's it's also it's more interesting and, and also like kind of sad that like Figgy left. He could but, have been like a divisional goat. Yeah. If it wasn't for Brandon Moreno. Yeah. And it wasn't for like here's the way I see it: if Davison didn't have the point deduction in their first fight. Yeah. In December of 2019. Yep. If he didn't get that point deduction. Yeah. Like Brandon Moreno's not rematching for the title. Certainly so not that Moreno, quickly, yeah. Yeah, Brandon Moreno at this point may just now be getting a rematch with Davis and Figueredo. Yep. He would have dominated everybody else. We would have been on some divisional goat, like goat tip. He would have yep. defended four or five more times. It's a shame, but that's the game we play, right? Yep. Um, Anything else you want to mention at 125? No, man, I'm good. Okay, cool. We move forward to men's bantamweight, 135 pounds. Probably the most interesting and most stacked division in all of MMA and definitely in the UFC as well. Uh, current champion Aljamain Sterling. There's been rumors that he's going to fight Henry Cejudo. There's yeah, been rumors, twice. Yeah. They, they died down and then yeah. now again, yeah. And there's rumors that he's going to fight Sean O'Malley. Like, we, we don't really know what's going on with Aljo. Wait, so is that who? Aljo's going to fight Sean O'Malley? Yeah. That, that he would I think that's kind of crazy, but I mean, yeah. But he is number one, right? Aljo, yeah. we'll see what happens with the surgery and everything for now. But uh, why don't you give me some thoughts on, uh, on 135? Yeah, man. Uh, Probably, you know, maybe the most stacked division in the entire UFC at this point. You know, if it's tough, man, it's tough. Uh, actually, I think Cejudo and Aljamain was actually, by the way, officially scheduled. Was it? I think David eight... didn't mention it today. He didn't. No. It, I think it was supposed to be. It's just my like... people are telling me that it's scheduled for April eighth. We'll, um, we'll find out. But well, yeah, last year, by the way, on April 9th. Oh, yes. Yes. And also, just yeah. for a fan or two, uh, Al Jermaine was the only person that actually signed your... Um, it's, it, he, he, he signed it to you. Yeah. 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 Al, Al's a dope dude when I met him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, there are so many fun fights to make in this division. You know, hell, I'd be down to watch Sean and uh, uh, Sugar Sean and, and Peter Yan fight again, to be honest. That was a great like, fight. Uh, yeah, and and you know you, we don't have to get into all that right now, but Marab versus Peter Yan is scheduled. Um, pretty much all the top guys besides Sugar Sean have a fight right now. Um, Marab versus Yan, yeah. obviously Aljo versus Cejudo is, is at least rumored. 
Um, Cheeto and Corey Sanhagen are. I can't wait for that one. Yeah, uh, there's just so many good matchups to make, and so many matchups that haven't been made. You know, um, oh, Rob Font versus Adrian Yanez was announced. Yeah, that's a banger. I mean, you know, and yeah. what a what a great opportunity for Adrian Yanez to you know. He's looked great, man. He's looked, he's looked really looked good. Unbelievable. And he and he's you know this will be a perfect opportunity for him to jump you know jump quite a few spots in the rankings mm-hmm. Dominic Cruz is still there uh, I don't think there's any there, there's actually been any talks of him actually retiring or anything like there's, that there's been rumors that Figgy and Dominic Cruz might be I've heard that once Figgy heals up of course I would a love to see that that's a great fight and I think Dominic would take that I think he I think he it's a fight he thinks he can win for sure yeah but I think Figgy smokes him I think Figgy smokes you think him so? yeah I think Figgy smokes him I could see it going either way but yeah um, also, you know, a little bit further down the rankings, another couple good fights, Pedro Munoz versus Chris Gutierrez. That one, That's a great fight. This is a great fight. This, this division just so stacked. We forgot about Umar. Yeah. For me, Umar is probably my dark horse. You know, somebody yeah. lower down the rankings who I think by the end of the year it could be top five potentially. Yeah. And, and I know it's a really stacked division, but dude, he's looked so dominant and he got a KO in his last. Yeah. That was a, a brutal KO. In his I last think one. I think to say that Umar Nurmagomedov would be champion, yeah. is crazy by the end of this year. Yeah, but he he, he will be a be champion. Top, yeah, I mean he probably will. He be. probably it's, it's, will it's be a champion. That yeah. way. Um, People don't. Nobody wants to fight great. him right now. He looks great. Um, definitely, that's like the guy right in the division. That's like the yeah. up and coming guy. Yep. Um, but man, like, like you're saying, this division is unbelievably stacked. And when we were picking our champions for the end of this year, I actually decide. Or, well, I didn't decide. I don't get to decide who's the champion. <laughs> but who, who I think is going to be the champion by the end of this year is Aljamain Sterling. Still, weirdly enough, right? Yeah. And, and here, again, here's my point, or here's my reasoning why it's he's going to defend. We don't know when. We don't know if it's April. Yeah. We don't know if it's May. We don't know if it's June yet. And if it becomes too late in the year, how many times is he going to defend? I mean, Aljo is not fighting more than twice this year. Right, he's he's max. Not, and it very well could be guy. once, yeah. yeah. So if it's once, I would favor him over Henry Cejudo. I would too I would, at this point. I, yeah, and I would favor him over Sean O'Malley today. Oh, absolutely. So no question. I, I think he holds. There's no him. question. But yeah, man, uh, Peter Yan, unfortunate kind of what's happened to him. Two losses. He looked like he was gonna rain. He did, and then one unlucky thing happens. Aljo is the crazy, like luckiest guy. He, dude. Here's the thing. He's the luckiest guy, like for sure. Like he should have never been champion. Yeah. But he's proven that but he's, he is yeah, a champion. Yeah, he won it. He won it. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like when you, when you look at the men's pound for pound, they have him at eight on the UFC's yep. thing, and it's like I can argue that he's top five. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you absolutely could. Besides the one loss to Peter Yan, who looked like he was unbelievable at that point, who was just tearing through yeah. everybody. He looked like he literally wasn't ever going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. And then Aljo technically, I guess, beat him the first time, and then the second time he actually beat him. Yeah. So like, I think I'm sick of the Aljo hating. I all am the too. Clown emojis and all the actors and yeah. Oscar award winning. I am whatever. too. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff there, but yeah, I, I think you can't take away from him the quality of a fighter that he is. Yeah. You know. Um, I also want to mention this: if Aljo does lose to Cejudo or Sean O'Malley, he's not losing to Cejudo. He's not losing to Sean O'Malley either. I, I don't think so either. But if he does, because yeah. there, there is a possibility. Sure. Crazier things have happened. I think Marab beats Peter Jan. And at that point, I think Marab gets the title. And then what? You think Al- and then Aljo just sits on his ass? Well, no. Aljo, at, at that point, he's, he's going up to 45. He's, he's, he's said, going up to 45? Yeah, he said that. He, going, he definitely could you know, fill out to 45. That's he, said, he said that once, you know, he's done defending and it's Marab's turn, his best friend, that he's going up to 45. I mean, this division's amazing, man. Just top to bottom, it's dope. Sanhagen and, like you said, Sanhagen and Cheeto. I think that's going to be a banger. Dude, that, that's probably the fight I'm most excited about. That's like fight of the year candidates. Yeah. Yeah. So. Also, a, a lesser fight, yeah. like, down the rankings, but one we didn't touch on. Um, Song Yadong versus Ricky, si- Ricky Simone. Ricky, yeah, that, that's going to be a banger, too. Absolutely. Like, this division, okay, look at it this And way. I know Song Yadong has had some. Losses through, recently. One but, through six, Dino. Yeah. All those guys can be champion by the end of this year. Yeah, okay. absolutely. No question. That That's crazy. No question. You don't have that in any other division. No, not like that. And then the guys that are like 15 to 10, I guess, those guys can definitely make some noise and be in that title picture next year. Yep. So, 
It is the most stacked division. It's the funnest division to me. Anything else? No, man. I think we've we we've we've, we've more at the end of the year. Yeah. I still think Aljo may. I so think, we're celebrating New Year's and it's still Aljo? Yeah, I think if for nothing else, then he's he may not fight twice. That, exactly. And he know? has the advantage of being the champ right yeah. now. I agree. So, and for whatever reason, like Dana is more like lenient with him. Like I feel like Fran- uh, Francis is like, oh, I'm not going to fight for a month. He's like, give me the f- <laughs> give me right. your title. Like, I mean, they did make an interim. Yeah, no. I, Aljo was having surgery or whatever, but yeah. he came back and, and won. Yeah. Um. Let's move forward to 45, so we're not wasting too much time here. Men's featherweight champion is the pound for pound number one currently, Alexander Volkanovsky. He puts that pound for pound number one on the line, but not his 45 title on the line. Um, next month in February, or in a couple weeks here, I mm-hmm. guess, he's going to fight Islam in Perth, uh, moving up, trying to be double champ. Um, what, what do you have to say about men's 145? I think that. I think Volk is a dominant champion. Yeah. Maybe the only dominant champion currently on the roster right now. Mm -hmm. Islam just got the belt. Mm -hmm. So I do think Islam will probably be that. Yeah. You know, time will tell, obviously. Um, I just think the only person, first of all, uh, this weight class is stacked too. Yes, it it is pretty stacked. But I think that, I think that Volk is a tier above the rest of them. Um, you know, Ar- he Arnold, clear, Arnold, no? he made that very clear. Dude, yeah. he beat Holloway brutally last time. Yeah, Absolutely bad. brutally, not man. Bad. Like, he beat, like, he, he's beaten all of them. He's beaten all of them, man. Like, he he's basically cleaned out the division at this point. Uh, he hasn't fought Arnold Allen, obviously, right? right. So, you know. Hasn't fought Yair. Or he hasn't fought Yair. He was, was he going to fight Yair? Or they were talking about that after the Emmett fight, maybe. So Yair and Josh Emmett are fighting for an interim interim title. That's and right. And obviously the winner is going to get him at some point later. Yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not saying like this is a super stack class. You know, I my boy T City, super him. sad what happened last time. Unfortunate. You know, Yair, um, he got the win, man. You know, yeah. it is what it is. T- not taking anything away. Um, you know, Arnold Allen is like my biggest question mark at the top of the weight class. Yeah. There, uh, you know, I would love to see what he can really do against some of the top guys at this point. Um, Yair, too, man. I mean, you know, I, I think he wins that Josh Emmett fight. What do you, like, I mean, I think... Yeah, I think Yair wins that for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, what are the odds on that? Can you check real yeah. quick? Yeah. Give me one second. Whatever they are, I... If they're not, like, crazy into Yair's favor, I would absolutely throw, some, throw a good amount of money at that. And disclaimer, we are not a betting podcast, okay? So don't don't come here and oh Dino you lost me all this money you know we're just this is for entertainment purposes more than anything. So BetMGM has Yair as a minus one sixty five and Josh Emmett as a plus one forty. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I I would take that all day if yeah. nothing else is a parlay piece. Yeah, and a great parlay piece. I, I mean I agree. Yeah, I think Yair wins that fight pretty comfortably. I think he's a lot better than Josh Emmett. To, I to be I think so with. too, man. I think and, Josh Emmett, you know, he's a great fighter. I just. Let's start with Josh Emmett. I don't think Josh Emmett deserves this. I think he lost to Kelvin Cater. I thought so too, man. That was I thought so. I thought that was clear. That was bad. I thought that was really clear. And we're gonna soon we're gonna move up to one fifty five and we're gonna talk I see it in the same vein as the Armin Sarukian and Gamrot fight. Where I think like clearly Sarukian won that fight. Yeah. I think clearly th- that was the case here. But whatever. You know, they're fighting now. There's not much you could do about it. I, I think that, I think Emmett would fight, right? Ortega's not here, and he's hurt, and he lost. And Arnold Allen is not ready to go either, so. Dude, Josh Emmett, tough as hell, man. He's 37 years old, dude. Yeah. It's time. Like, I think this would be a kind of a, you know, changing of the guard kind of situation. I'm down. And and I'd like to see Yair Rodriguez and Volkanovski. I think Yair kind of gives Volk something to think about that he hasn't had to think about with these other guys. So that'll be What, like the kicks? Yeah, just the kicks and the power. Yeah. I think he has more power than anyone he's fought. You think so? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I still think Volk beats him. I think Volk beats him pretty easily. You know what I would like to see? And I wanted to get into this. Where's Giga Chikaze, first of all? He, it's been over a year Yeah. at this point. And he wasn't injured. He just got his ass beat. Yeah. But. Man, really, really, love, really bad. I was really, I really wanted to see Giga versus Volkanovski. I think the size difference would have been 
first of all, hilarious to look yeah. at. But I think he would have gave Volk like real problems yeah. being that you know that good of a striker versus someone that much shorter than him. At some point, yeah. like size does matter, right? At some point, you right. know what I mean. And like, that might be that. Um, I wanted to ask you, what do you what do you think Max Holloway? Max Holloway is such an interesting case right now because I do think he's literally the. Ah, I mean, he's he seems like he's trending down at of this course. point. Yeah, I think he's finally trending down. Tough as hell, obviously. Uh, there's nothing I can say about Max Holloway that hasn't been said already. We know who he is, man. You know, that Yair fight was absolutely brutal for both of them. What a fight, yeah. though! My goodness. Yeah. Um. Before that, was I don't know what you do. To, uh, he doesn't have a fight schedule right now. I mean, does. What about him versus Arnold Allen? Right, and, and that's been rumored. And sure, like give give the you know give the kid his chance, I guess. Yeah. Like at that point, but I think Max Holloway beats Arnold Allen. I think so too. Do you want Max L? I'm sorry. Do you want Max Holloway kind of like cock blocking the division? Mm, no. You know what I mean? No, and like, it's and it's it's tough because like at the very top too. Yeah. He's number one. Yeah, he's I don't know. number one right And now. he's been number one for how long? Like, Forever, yeah. since he lost the belt. Yeah, he loses, and then he wins a fight, and he's back up to number one. Like, and then they talk about him going up to 55, and he can't cut it there. Like, we nah. saw that with Poirier, and that was a better I, Max I think Holloway. this is his weight class. Yeah, this is his weight class. That was a better yeah. Max Holloway yeah. than today. Yeah. And he, he got dominated by Dustin Poirier. So if he doesn't belong at 55, I think he's going to slowly kind of just lose his spot here at 45 until he's ready to go which is super sad because that's max holloway like i know you love max holloway i saw i saw him at uh, at aria in vegas um we saw him actually outside of the team oval too when he was skateboarding skateboarding, yeah yeah that was pretty cool anyone else you want to mention i just want to give a quick shout out to Ilya taporia who i think is going to skyrocket up these rankings dude what a shame that he's even as low as he is at this point yeah I mean, but look who's in front of him. Giga, Calvin Cater, the zombie. I would put, I would, I would, I would put him ahead. I think he takes all the guys that you just mentioned. How about that? Ilya, well, he's not going to fight Giga. No, he's not going to fight Giga, yeah. obviously. But but I think Giga I think, beats him. Huh? I think Giga beats him. I you know do? that's not going to ever happen. You're crazy. But I think... I, mean, I think you're crazy. Look at the striking difference. Like, look, I mean, like... Giga's the striking like, difference? Like, really? Yeah, like, and he's so much taller, too. He's, he is taller. But whatever. I don't know. Look at the shape of his head, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I mean. So you got Volkanovski as champion, right? I do. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a tough division to predict, but I do, man. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I do. Also, I think moving up a weight class, he's not going to fight that quickly again. You At know? 55? It, oh, you're saying in general he's not going to fight quickly after February. He, even if he wins, he's yeah. not going to win. Right, even, right. even if he wins, he's not staying at 155. Well, he said he would. I don't. I don't buy him winning buy to that. begin with. He's not going to win. Right. I don't buy him winning. But even if he does, he said he would defend the 45 title. So, whatever. The know. 45 title, yes. Yeah. I still don't see him win. He, he'll def- if he, no matter how this fight with Islam goes, I don't see him defending it more than one time. At the 45 belt. One more time. Aside from that fight at 150. The fight's yeah. at 155. The Islam and Volk. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Islam's already a weight, but he's not cutting down to 145. Right. So I'm just saying, no matter how that fight goes, yeah. I don't see, I don't see Volk fighting more than one more time after that, and it's going to be at featherweight. In general, you don't see him fighting one more time. No, no, more like, than he's not like retiring. Okay. I just, I just feel like this year. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. This year, hundred percent. My bad. Um, I thought you were just saying in general. I was like, oh, he's retiring. All no, of a sudden, no way. No, no. Volk is Volk has got yeah, that he, fire in him. He's got that dog in him. He's not retiring. Yeah, he's he's chilling for now. He's gonna he's going to be the champion at 145. Yeah. At the end of this year, I'm certain of that. If I had to bet on any one of these people being champion, it's Alexander Volkanovski at mm, 45. Yep. Anyways, let's move forward. Men's lightweight. Uh, current champion is Islam Makachev. He won that title. I guess it was vacant at UFC 280. Versus Charles Oliveira. That's some bullshit. It is what it is. We yep. don't need to delve too far into that. But he's defending the 55 strap against the aforementioned Volkanovski mm-hmm. in a couple weeks at Perth, or in Perth, Australia. Uh, top of the division looks like this. We have Oliveira at 1, Dustin Poirier 2, Justin Gaethje 3. Dustin Poirier 2 is crazy. I mean, he just wins when it's not for the title. He's that guy. Yeah. And then we have Benil Dariush 4 and Michael Chandler rounding out the top 5. 
we do have a fight set, or we do have a couple fights set, actually. Um, Gaethje versus Fazeev should be an absolute great Man, fight. I'm super excited for that. Yeah, that's that's going to be great. Um, you're going to get to see both of those guys do what they do best, right? Yeah. You're going to see Fazeev doing his whole striking thing and trying to be the better striker. Yep. You're going to see Gaethje absolutely ready and willing to go to war with somebody who's yeah. a striker. So yep. there, there's no way that fight. How do you see work. that fight going? Personally, I think Rafael Fazeev starches him at some point. Really? Yeah, starches I think, him. I think. He, yeah, I think he knocks him. Chandler out. didn't. I know. But you think yeah. Fazeev will? I think Fazeev is technically better. He's definitely the the best technical fighter of those guys, striker wise. Sure. He, he's the most. Oh well, there's, there's no question about right. that. Yeah. So Gaethje's available to be hit. You yeah. know. He's he's like it's almost like he wants to be hit. Right. Yeah. So. That's not a good recipe. No. So I do see Fazeev beating him. There was an interview that the Schmo did with Benil Darius yesterday. I don't know if you happen to see that. I didn't. But Benil said that they're trying to work on the Benil and Oliveira fight. And that supposedly has been pushed. They wanted it to be in January. And then he wasn't ready to go in January in Rio. Then they pushed it to February and then March and then April. And now they're looking yeah. at May. He thinks that they're going to skip him if Fazeev beats Gaethje. Who? Benil thinks that he's going to beat Oliveira. Yeah. And then he thinks that Fazeev... He's a favorite, by the way. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. You actually sent it to me. Yeah. And then he thinks that Fazeev is going to be Gaethje, is what I got from it. And that if that's the case, the UFC will skip him for Rafael Why? Fazeev. He just... That's the way he sees it. It, it. it was like... It seemed like he... Why knows. isn't he more active? Benil, he's trying to be. He fought in October. He's supposedly ready to go in February, but Oliveira wasn't. So yeah. that, that's pretty active, I guess. I, I think it's kind of crazy to me that he's a favorite. Uh, the the, 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 a favorite the over Charles. Yeah, the disrespect yeah. to Charles Oliveira after absolutely dominating. Not, I mean, let, let me take a step. Maybe not dominating, but winning in dominant fashion at the, by the end of it. Yeah. Versus all the top guys. Right. Kind of crazy to me. I mean. I mean, it, there might be some recency bias in there. Hundred percent. You know, he don't look that good at two eighty. So. If that's the case, I guess Benil Darius is on a seven, eight fight winning streak, something like that, and Charles Charles Oliveira is on a one fight losing streak. Yeah. So maybe that's what it is, and maybe they think this is kind of the decline of Charles Oliveira. I don't know what's going to happen in that fight. I'm not going to pretend to know what's going to happen in that fight, but I think winners got to get a title shot, even if it's Charles Charlie Oliveira. Yeah. So. It's kind of crazy that they didn't just give him a rematch, to be honest, but it is what it I is. I agree. After um, all the things that happened with that title. Yeah. Looking down the standings, or looking down the rankings, do you see anyone that you want to talk about? Yeah, I was actually, I'm glad you said that. I was actually just going to ask you that. I really like Gamrot. Mm -hmm. like, I think he's for real. Yeah. I think he's a really legit fighter. I think Iron Mike, it's time for him to, he's lost three of his last four. Yeah. I think Iron Mike Chandler, it's time for him to do the sport a favor. And give one of these guys a shot. I want to see him fight an up and exactly. Thank yeah. you. I want to see him, like I want to see like a, like a uh, Armin Sarukian versus Mike Chandler, right? Mm -hmm. Like I he think just called him out. Oh, did Armin he? Sarukian just called him out on Twitter today. So I didn't see that. Yeah. So I for he me said, Sarukian. I won't see you at the top. Which is not good English, but you want to see him at the top, right? That's terrible. <laughs> That's awful. That's Whatever. what he said. Yeah. It was god off. It was like, let's fight, something like that. Like, you know, let's we'll we'll fight. I won't see you at the top. We'll like, put fisticuffs. Not... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't love that. That's a weird joke. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just think Mike Chandler, like, dude, you came into this organization and you got a title shot, like, immediately. Yeah. Right? And it's like, that's fine. You you were at the top of your game. Yeah, in Bellator. In Bellator, and, you know, I get that. But, yeah, I think for me, I think... The three guys that, I guess four guys that I'm like really interested in seeing what they do this year would be Armin Sarukian, Jalen Turner, Hinata Moicano. I love that guy. I love the like the the the, the, the wants money. I love that. There, I would love to see him versus Connor. To be honest. Yeah, I mean at some point. It's not a huge money fight, but right. like I think you know I think Hinata Moicano will will do enough to sell that fight. Um, and um. Yeah, who did I say? Hanano Mukano, John Turner, Armin Sarukin. Yeah, I think those three guys, I don't think they're going to be champ or anything like that. You know, I do think that those are three very interesting guys. Guram Kuteleje, too. Like, I, I, if he ever fights. If he ever fights, you know, he's probably had more cancel fights than anybody in the last year. 
Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I don't see Islam sniffing a loss. Right. I don't I mean, see him sniffing a loss in the foreseeable future, sadly. Sure. I think he's a weight bully. I'm sick of him already. Yeah. Um, you know, not, nothing against him as a person. I just... And, and here's the thing, right? It's it's that Khabib thing, right? Yeah, and it's right. just like... It's boring. Dude, dude, how, how, dude how are you... How, are, how do you look 40 pounds bigger than everybody you fight in there? Yeah. He looked huge against Charles Oliver. He's gonna look Dude, he's gonna bigger look against Volk. Giant against Volk. Yeah. Like I Here, here's my thing. Here's how I see this division. Yeah, I don't see Islam Makachev losing. Is it possible? I say yes, obviously, because while with Habib we didn't see it, with Islam we've seen against him get Volk? knocked out. No, no, just in general. Oh, in the weight class. Yeah, in the weight class. We've seen Islam get knocked out. So who UFC. though, man? Right, but we saw him get knocked out in the UFC. So I'm just saying sure. there's a possibility. Sure. But Here's what I want to see at 155. I think Islam defends against Volk. I think he probably defends again at in Dubai in, in October or November, yeah. whenever they go back there. Um, but here's the thing. I want to see, at that point, I want to see Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, and Michael Chandler put their spots up on the line versus those younger guys or less established guys. Your Fazeebs, which we have you know, going on with Gaethje. Yeah. Your Sarukians, your Jalen Turners, your... Moicano's. There's no way Connor even comes anywhere close to this weight class anymore, right? No, Connor's he's probably fighting that well to weight. Yeah, he's yeah. fighting that well to weight. And, and I did have that here in my notes. I just wanted to mention Connor and Tony rumors on uh, tough. I'm dumbed down for that. Yeah, down. That's probably one seven. Is it? I mean, who would you rather see him fight, Chandler or, or Tony? I mean, Chandler is the bigger fight. I'm a Connor. Is it? Yeah. Money wise, yeah. or you're saying like? I think money wise for sure. Really? Yeah, I think Michael Chandler does a great job for himself on the microphone and he knows how no, to No, he's great, himself. yeah. Um, Tony, like at this point, everyone thinks Tony's washed up. That's he's the, washed. That's the, he's washed, he but has. you want, Con like Connor gets sparked out by Chandler. Right, that, yeah. there's a possibility. There's definitely I don't think the UFC, I don't think Dana wants that. And, you know, Benil Darius and Dustin Poirier have both picked Connor to beat Chandler. Wait, they, say it again? Uh, Benil and Poirier. Both said that Connor. They predict that Connor would beat Chandler. They did. Yeah. Wow. Poirier said it's because Chandler is very hittable. He's the most hittable Connor guy in the would, entire Connor division. Would catch him. Yeah. So I mean that fight would be unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm down. Those are two of my favorite guys. Oh, I know you love them. Yeah. But whatever. I know I you mean, love Chandler. Let's let's give Connor the tune up against Tony. Let him get yeah. a win, and then we can talk about Masvidal or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, really quickly before we move forward into 170, which we're kind of already doing. Champion at 155, you said Islam Makhachev by the end of the year. I think if there's any sure thing yeah. in the entire UFC, yeah. it's that. So, like I said with Volkanovski, you're going the lock uh, Yeah, Islam. I think the lock is Islam, I, I and, it's, and it's not locks. close. Like, yeah. yeah, I think those are the two locks. Um, being a Syrian, I would love to see Benil do it. Whoa, what? Are, being a Syrian? You what? I, don't, what? <laughs> I, just, I just didn't know. <laughs> I, I would love Benil to do it. So, you know, whatever. Give him a shout out then, though. Benil Darius, maybe do it. <laughs> I'll survive, guys. Um, <laughs> he said, anyway, baby, do it. 170, let's move forward. We got. Yeah, we the, should pick it up a little. Yeah, the new champ, uh, Leon Edwards. Leon Rocky Edwards, crazy comeback. Unbelievable. Kick. That was wild over the former pound for pound number one, Kamara. Uzi. That's how I would have done you, though. That's weird. You, know, <laughs> you know, keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. But, uh, yeah, he, he beat Kamara Usman. They're rematching coming up in London. Yeah. Uh, questions for me as far as this division is concerned is where does Colby Covington go from here? We're not hearing anything about him since the Masvidal incident. Uh, Hamza Chamayev and Bilal Muhammad, something's got to happen. I'm assuming those two are going to get booked. We just had Masvidal and Gilbert Burns uh, set up. Shafkat and Jeff Neal are going. And Holland and Ponzinibbio got made today. Uh, what do you make, I guess, first and foremost of Leon Edwards, uh, Kamaru Usman 3? I think Kamaru wins it. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um think he's got a lot more ways to win yeah um i think the last fight will do him good in the long term okay. you know in the rematch um ah i don't know though man like i could absolutely see leon winning the fight though yeah i'm a big proponent of the guy who won the last fight yeah i always pick him to win the next one. okay yeah so like if we're ever going into a trilogy give me the guy who won second mm -hmm. yeah i mean I, my initial instinct was kamaru mm -hmm. but then i don't know as i was saying as i like spoke the words it was like i don't know though man i could totally see leon catching him again you know and and that's going to be a phenomenal fight 
Like it's gonna be a like. Could you? Up. But let me ask you this: yeah. Could you see Leon pulling out a decision? Yeah, I I, I think Leon really because yeah. he he was losing pretty. I know. I know badly. he was. Like, I think he's got his number, and I always take the guy who just won. If we're doing yeah, yeah like I said. But here's the thing: I love that we're talking about it. And it's gonna be such a great build up, and it's gonna be super fun to do that in London. Yeah, it, it's all moot. Yeah, because at the end of the year, Hamza Chamay is the champion here again. You know, so <laughs> yeah. it's like, what are we really talking? You think about? so? Yeah, I mean, yeah, who's I think so too. This guy, right? Nobody. Like, I love Colby Covington. I love Gilbert Burns. I love Jorge Masvidal. I like Leon Edwards. A the lot. only person I could get into Hamza's way is Hamza. Yeah, if he wants to go out there and bang. If I was gonna say, yeah. it, it, like, if he if he's gonna, because he's the kind of guy. He's like, I will bang. I'll I'll beat you at your own game, right? So I think that was just once. I think he. Just I don't know. I think like he gets really then. excited, though. He gets he gets ahead of himself. But yeah, what's happening with Kobe? You know, I think Shavkat is an obvious. He's undefeated, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it's it's not that hard to he go out of your way and, and pick and, and. Oh my God! No question. Yeah. So. No question. Um, yeah, I don't think it's that crazy to see a sixteen and zero guy is like on the up and up. You know. Right. Um, I'm gonna go out on a win there. Yeah, I mean, who else we got? Like, Jeff Neal, I know he's fighting Shafkat. I think Shafkat is going to dispose of him yeah. pretty easily. I know Jeff Neal's a legit striker. I'm not taking anything away. You know what's one fight I'm excited about is the Sean Brady versus Michelle Pereira one. I did not know that got made. You didn't know that? Yeah, no, so that, how great of a fight is that? I think we, Michelle Pereira sparks him. And well, af- after, after seeing him fight Bilal. Yeah, like, yeah. he looked like he had nothing on the feet. Dude, and he looked, like, scared. Yeah, and Bilal's... Who might and who might have said I'm sitting on my ass here, you know? But Bilal's nothing special anywhere. Bilal's like solid all around. That's Bilal, he right? And deserves our respect. I mean, he I deserves guess, our respect right, for being where but he is. But he's, he's not pillow fisted. Yeah, and he's boring as shit. Here's my thing. He peaked. You think so? Yeah, because he's not. He, who's he beating? He's not beating Usman. He's not beating Colby. He's not beating Hamzad. He's not beating Leon Edwards. You think? We saw he's convinced months. he would beat Colby, but I don't know if you saw that. Come on, dude. What makes you think? He's a lot bigger than a man. What makes you think? By the way, you ever just you ever, you ever just be like kind of like skinny fat? Uh, personally? Like up, up to... <laughs> <laughs> I have. You've never in your life been skinny fat. Just You've just been fat. Been fat yeah. <laughs> I feel that, though. Um, yeah, no, I just like... Do you remember what Bilal looked like, like six years, five, six yeah, years ago? Yeah, I do. And then it was just it's like, not that good. Um, all of a sudden, it's just like chunky. Just, People are talking about roids, but he's for sure on yeah. roids, or at least was. I mean, you don't yeah. just all of a sudden get absolutely. That, that's the person. If we look at every division top five, that's the person I'm least concerned with, and I think he's there on accident. <laughs> I think I think he's there on accident. I know, but look at the guy he's beaten, man. Who did he just he just beat Sean Brady, who showed that he has no striking. Okay, but before but before he beat him though, Sean Brady was like so the most gassed up prospect in the entire right, division. But he's, just, he's a strict grappler. Sure, but then he also beat Luke, pretty dumb, like pretty yeah. dominant decision. And he looked terrible that fight Vicente Luke. Maybe sure that might be credit to Bilal Muhammad. He beat Wonder Boy, which was a terrible matchup for Wonder Lay Boy. Yeah, that was boring as shit. He beat Damian Maya. I mean, and, it was an and older the Damian. Opposite. He wouldn't let him lay on him. You know what I mean? He like, yeah. stayed away. Like, Bilal's been playing the game of, like, what are you bad at? He's getting people that are good at one thing and bad at something, and he's, like, picking on their bad yeah. ones. And it's like, okay, cool. Do yeah. your thing. Keep I was wins. just impressed last time against Sean Brady with a striking. I mean. Yeah, he's a better but it also than Sean Brady. But it literally looked like Sean Brady was so lost, dude. Yeah, he had no like, idea what he, he He didn't know how to defend a strike. He, didn't, he, he wasn't blocking. He was just eating them. Bizarre. I mean, I just don't think when it comes to. There's Gilbert Burns who's behind him, who needs to be ahead of him. I'm sorry, but Gilbert Burns needs to be ahead of him. Yeah. So Burns, oh, Hamza, oh, if they Colby. fought. Burns. Burns would spark him. Burns, Hamza, Colby, Camaro, Leon all beat the crap out of him. I agree. But I think I think he peaked here. I would love to see him versus, him versus Covington, though. I will say that. I think the next fight is him and Hamza. Who? Bilal and Hamza. And I think Hamza just mauls him. And then goes on to maul whoever the champion yeah. is. Yeah, I think so, Hamza sparks him up, to be honest. Yeah, whatever. He, yeah. he kills himself. Yeah. Out. So, anyways, end of the year, 170. I have Hamza Chamaya being the champion. What about you? My only concern is, is he, like, he, he doesn't up. fight, man. Yeah. He, like, people don't want to fight him. So, my only concern is, like, and Bilal, I feel like, is a guy that would take that fight. So, if he does, Bilal's, what, three right now? Four. What, what? 
four. Yeah. So, I mean, shit, if, if he takes that fight and wins that fight, which he would, then absolutely. He would. Huh? He would. Hamza? You're, you're saying if he takes that fight and wins it, Hamza. Hamza, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's winning that yeah. fight easily, dude. I, I think I'm with you, man. I would love to see, like, Hamza is so much bigger than Kobe Covington, right? Yeah. Like, skill set-wise, Kobe Covington would be a great matchup, but he's just, Kobe's one of those few guys, like, that fights at his natural weight class, mm-hmm. you know? And I commend him for it, but yeah, it is what it is, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you. Hamza is probably the champ, and if it's not Hamza, it's Usman. Right. That's fine. I, I think Leon beats Usman. Or Leon, I guess. Yeah, so um, an interesting division at the top, because it could be one of those three guys. Yeah. But I think you're right, though. Probably Hamza. I, I think it's Hamza unless he decides to go to 85. I was just thinking yeah. that, yeah. So we transition to 185, middleweight, current champion Alex Fajeda. Just got the rematch booked with Israel Adesanya, the former champion, who was starting to look sort of like a goat of that division. He was well on his way, but here comes his boogeyman chasing him into another league, into another sport, Yeah, and just, you know, follows him there. Uh, number one is Israel Adesanya. Number two is Robert Whitaker, Bobby Knuckles, who, to me, by what he did to Marvin Vittori, showed that he is head and shoulders above everybody else in this division. So, to me, that's kind of where the conversation starts and ends. Yeah. As far as champions are concerned, it's one of those three guys. No question. Or, you know, Hamza Chamayev moving up to 185. Uh, yeah. We do have Marvin Vittori really quickly, sorry, booked against, uh, I believe it's Roman Delize. Yes, R- Roman Delize. We have Chris Curtis and uh, Kelvin Gastelum. Yep. And then Derek Brunson and Drigas Duplessis, your boy. Uh, I was uh, gonna, why is he my boy? I was gonna actually ask you about that fight specifically. I think that's such an interesting fight. Yeah, I think Drake is sparks him. Yeah, I think Brunson. I think on it's the way out, yeah. I think it's probably a first round knockout or yeah. yeah. I think it's first round knockout. Duplessis is not capable of having a bad, a boring fight. No. Yeah. He he's I I, don't, I also don't think he's that good. I think he's good. No, he's I gonna get he Terrence cap- McKinney, dude. Yeah, I think he he's like, he's like, like he's seven, like eight. he's like the Terrence McKinney of he's so. He's so wild. Mm-hmm. He's so wild, dude. And he goes like for the kill, and he's gonna get. I'm sorry, he's gonna get knocked out. Yeah. Aggressively, aggressively, point, yeah. aggressively knocked out, like a violent knockout. What do you make of Marvin Vittori, Roman Delize? That's a really tough one for me. Yeah. That's a really tough one for me. I think Vittori wins it, man. Sam, I, I think Vittori. I think Vittori win. wins it. You know. Um, and then you know. And then there he is again. And like, I think Vittori is going to, you know, he's going to do the Sean Strickland thing where, like, he's going to, but he's better than Sean. Just a little bit. I think bit. Vittori yeah, yeah. is better than Sean yeah, Strickland. Yeah, yeah. And they're training together now. Oh, are they? Yeah. <laughs> they're training together now. Not so. a brain cell. <laughs> not, a brain, what a, what a not a brain cell in the, in the vicinity. That's a fun group to chill and drink with, by the way, for sure. I've never met either one of those guys. No but question. But I would love to sit down and have a couple drinks with those two. Look, I don't. I don't think we need to go too far into middleweight yeah. to be honest, because I think exactly what you said in the beginning. It's either going to be Adesanya Whitaker or um, Alex Pereira, who's the current champion. Yeah. I think Pereira is going to spark out Izzy again. Okay. Again, um, I think Whitaker actually beats Pereira. And a lot of people are picking Robert Whitaker. To and champion. Robert Whitaker is who I would predict to be the champ by the end of the year. Also, my favorite fighter on the entire roster, Bobby Knuckles. Uh, I think, personally, I think Israel Adesanya finally gets it done against Alex Pereira. And the reason I say that is just because in the times we have seen those guys fight, like, of total fight time, Israel Adesanya has dominated the vast majority of the time he's been winning the fights. Then he just isn't. Yeah. All of a sudden. You know what I mean? So I'll ride with Izzy going against my, the guy who won last. He's terrifying. Fight thing. He's yeah. so scary. Pereira's wild. I wanted to ask you a question because I know you boy. I'd rather you not. Okay, forget no. it. We're going to move forward. No, but uh, I, I wanted to ask you. I know your boy is ranked number 15. If you scroll down there, you're going to see boy. who your boy is. Darren, <laughs> I what do, is up with Darren? I do Tim? love is me. He done? He's done, man. It's over? It's over. The experience is done. He came out to the Andrew Tate song last time as opposed to Sweet Caroline. That's what a is, banger of a song. You're talking about that French song. Yeah, it was good. That's a banger. It was good. Um... It's over. Oh, I just, I wish he was better, man. I yeah. wish Darren Till was better. Darren, what the, what up, man? God damn it. You're so sloppy, dude. You just love drinking and partying and Same. shit. Like, just, Same. me too, but get it together, man. You remember what you were doing before? 
Just get back to that, man. Like, okay, Chris Curtis is right above him. Chris yeah. Curtis wrecks Darren Till. Wrecks him yeah. right now. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. Darren Till's probably going to sleep, dude. Like, At that point, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you really quickly, Paulo Costa, what do you do? He doesn't want to fight. He's got a contract where he has to fight for 70 and 70 yeah. coming up next. He doesn't want to do it. So, yeah. I think happens? I think Paulo Costa is doing himself a disservice. Uh-huh. I think at this point, win that fight, dude, and then you have so much more leverage. Yeah. You have so much more leverage. Paulo Costa is a crazy, insane man. And he kills it on Twitter. Dude, I love... Yeah, it's, it's the, amazing. I love his, like, fa- his face turn. Yeah. His baby yep. face turned yep. recently with the secret juice and like Unreal. he leaned into all that. I and like it. his English got better. I love that. I think he needs to keep doing that. Um Yeah, man. I I you know I think Paulo Costa is a guy who's a who's a serious threat to knock dude, he's the the kicks that he throws. The kicks that he threw at Vittori. Yeah. That fight was fun, dude. That was an insane fight. Yeah. The kicks that he threw at Vittori's body though. First of all, both like those guys got shot. chins like yeah. unbelievable, dude. Um, yeah, I I think he's, I think he's better than Brunson. I think he's, I think he's a top five. I think he's top five in the weight class. There's no question about yeah. it. I think you know. It's just weird though because we saw him against Luke Rockhold, and I was just kind of like, not that. Well, that I, was just I, such a not bizarre. That I don't like Luke Rockhold, but I just expect that it was a, a that was such a bizarre fight too, though. You know. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, Is just he better than Sean Strickland. Oh man, it, uh, it's not close to me. Okay. I think I think yeah. Paulo Costa lays Sean Strickland out, dude. Okay. I think he knocks him out. So, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, what do you think? Like, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know if he lays him out. I think he wins. I think he wins like yeah. by, like very easily. I, I think he wins, and under you know beside if you go underneath that two spot, which is Robert Whitaker, I don't see any of those guys beating anyone on top. Of him. Yeah. So. You, you have, uh, you have, I'm sorry, you have Bobby Knuckles being the champion at the end of the year. I do. Okay, I'm going with Izzy. We move forward. To yep. 05, unless you have anything else to say about 185? No, I mean, the only thing I'll say is there are some interesting prospects. Andre Muniz. I like Andre Muniz. Brendan Allen, obviously. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't think they're better than Bobby Knuckles. I think Bobby Knuckles is so well-rounded. Yeah. I think Izzy and Pajeda have, like, such a kickboxing advantage. I don't think any of I think, like you said in the beginning, man, I think it's those three. Yep. You know? All right, so I'm going with Izzy. You're going with Bobby Knuckles. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll remember this. At the end of the year, we'll have something. Yeah. Whoever has the most, win something, lose it, whatever. I'm down. All right, 205, light heavyweight, as we're getting close to the end here. I mean, the New, most, the most currently the most interesting division, yeah, for sure. Yeah, newly crowned champion, born in Chicago, Sweet Dreams, Jamal Hill, yeah, boy. Yep. Um, took the title. Uh, former champion, my boy, Yuri Prohashka, who... I love Yuri too, man. Don't get me wrong, but... Yeah. I mean, that's the most interesting thing right now, right? It's like, what's going to happen between Jamal Hill and Yuri? I know Yuri... Put I'm out, coming! Yeah, Yuri put out the I'm coming video. But where you at, though? Right, and then Jamal put the that's what she said video out. Um, that's what she said! I hate that, that killed me. That dude. was funny. The, that the, was funny. I hate sure. that, like, all the outlets, when they repost the videos, they cut, like... They cut, the, the, it, they, yeah. cut yeah. the <laughs> they cut the best part of it. That's what she said. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be super duper interesting. If Yuri comes back by the end of this year and we get him I and need Jamal. A, I need a brief about this. Sorry. Do your thing. If this? we get him and Jamal. This is Hollerhead. Hollerhead. Dana. What's up, Thanks, bro? Dana. Uncle What's Dana. Good? Um, if we can get Yuri. Sponsor us for real, though. For real. If we can get Yuri and Jamal Hill before Jamal Hill defends that title, yeah, that's going to be super dope. I think that's going to be a really like that's going to sell before a lot. he defends the title. Yeah, because Yuri's not coming back at the end of the year. Yuri said he'd be back by August. Yuri's out of his mind. Well, uh, yeah, he is. He is out of his yeah, mind. Yeah, not August. Out of August, mind. I could see. So that's early. Jamal season. Hill just fought in January. Seven months ain't that bad for a two hundred five er. Nah, I but I would I would like to see him to, to stay a little more active. Right, but it's like active against who? We have the winner of Uncle Live Blockovich. Right, they just fought and didn't do like the UFC clearly doesn't want those guys as champions now. No, I feel like that UFC was so weird off. though. Yeah. That was so weird. Like maybe that was, I've never seen that before. Me, he's like that sucked. Yeah, like, you guys, no, no. yeah, no, like, we're not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Nobody you know, gets a title. You know like, what's crazy? You know, twenty. If I would have told you this three years ago, you'd have said I'm out of my mind. 
And if I would have told you this two years ago and one year ago, you would have said the same thing. There's a possibility that at the end of 2023, your champion at 205 ends up being Anthony Smith. Don't say that. I know, right? But I will say I respect. It's possible that that's the next fight for Jamal Hill. That was booked before this fight. They're like training too, and now together, yeah. and they're like, it's, so, they're like, it's not weird. No, but I, whatever. I they're like, you guys weird. think it's weird? It's not weird. It's weird. So I guess you do Uncle Ive and Jan Blahovic, right? Don't forget what, do you, what about Rockage. I mean, he's got to come back from injury. We don't know when that is. Yeah, uh, brutal injury. Right, but as, as soon as he's back, I guess you win one, maybe two. You got to win two fights at that point to probably get a title shot for Rocket. Yeah. Um, Johnny Walker just got a big win, jumped up a couple spots. I think Johnny win. Walker is irrelevant. I think Same. Anthony Smith is irrelevant. I think um, I think we're irrelevant underneath six, which is Anthony Smith on the UFC's current ranking. You're including Glover too, though. Yeah, let's let's take Glover. So under there. five. So let's say five, because I'm going to include Anthony Smith just due to the fact that he might get a title shot. I yeah. know it sounds crazy, but he might get a title shot against Jamal Hill. I, that fight was booked. I'm not a big fan of Anthony Smith. I like Anthony Smith. He's been rubbing me the wrong way lately. I'm not going to lie to you. That's gay. That's fine. And that's fine. Mm. 2023. It is. Um, I just want to say, I thought, I, I respect that. I thought he was like, I thought Anthony Smith was done. Me too. I thought he was like. Then he went on a little streak. And then he went on a little streak yeah. in a tough ass weight class. So, yeah. Respect. I just don't see a situation where, dude, he's not beating Jamal Hill. He's not doing that. He's not. I mean, the grappling, I think, is a different level. It is I a know, different. No, it is I a different I know we just saw Glover it is a, and Jamal Hill, and Jamal Hill looked like a world beater against Glover Teixeira. Who I know, but, but, so I know but, just, but think about but, how much better the grappling is from Glover to Anthony Smith. I understand, but... And Glover's no schlub on the feet. Like, he's old, though. I, I get it. I, I get what you're saying. I just don't see that happening, man. There are... Like... I like, think Ekolaev is more likely to be the champ than... Than who? Than Anthony Smith. Right. But Ekolaev's going to have to fight before that. And he's going to have to fight Jan. Right. And I think if they want to get Jamal Hill active, the only... Oh, you're saying... That, you're saying the next fight for Jamal Hill could be... Could be Anthony Smith. Is all I'm saying, because we don't have. I'm a, sorry. Now I get. Now yeah. I, I misunderstand. Now that makes a lot more sense. Right. I still hate that. Yeah, but it is what it is. The fight yeah. was booked before this fight got made, and they might just rebook it. And Anthony Smith is a company guy. He works for ESPN and the UFC and all that. So maybe we see that. I think all of it is moot, Dino, because my boy Yuri Prohaska is coming back at some point. He's and coming. I, and I, he's coming. And I think he starches everybody. Do not come. Position. Right now, I won't. I'm going right to come. Now right now, I won't. But yeah, I, I think he ends up winning it. Is there anyone you want to talk about at 205 as far as up-and-comers? Up-and-comers? Ryan Spann. Ryan Spann. Okay, Superman Spann. I guess, yeah. I guess he's an up-and-comer. I mean, I, I wouldn't there. say up-and-comer, yeah. but like, I think he's a dark horse, if you want to say. Somebody who's outside of the top five. Yeah. Who I think realistically could do something. Mm-hmm. I still don't think he's well-rounded enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I, you know, obviously he can absolutely lay people out, mm-hmm. and violently as we've seen. I just don't. I think the the top guy. You're not. You're not violently knocking out Magomed Ankalaev. He's not violently knocking out Jamal Hill. Like you know, I just I don't see that. Yeah. So. So let me ask you this: Who's the champion, December thirty first of this year? I think this is the hardest to predict of any other weight class. I think this is the is hardest it because the. I Maybe think it's because I want not there. it's that. Yeah. I think it's also like Jamal Hill shouldn't have gotten this title shot. He shouldn't have, but he but yeah, he did his thing. No, I, I, his thing. I listen. I, I'm telling you, I was beyond happy yeah. when he won, and in such dominant fashion. People forget, like people think Jamal Hill is like a power puncher. He is a power puncher, yeah. but Jamal Hill has over a hundred significant strikes in multiple fights at light heavyweight. Like yeah. that. People don't do that. I was light, surprised at, at his cardio this fight. People don't do that at light heavyweight. I'm telling you, they don't. I feel like I feel like that's where you, if you take a step back, like the fact that he's not heavily muscled mm-hmm. actually does potentially help him in his cardio. Muscles, man, it, it takes a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. if you're throwing get, a lot of muscle, saying. like you know what I mean, like. And he's not a grappler, so maybe there's not you know. Not he's not a grappler, but he's got muscle. really good takedown defense. Yeah, he's got great takedown defense, as we saw against Glover. Um, 
he was able to get up, which is yeah. a huge thing against Glover. Shocking to me. Dude, got up like pretty quickly yeah. too. Yeah. Um, got out of I, I guess Krylov. And Dude, Krylov and Span are fighting, by the way. And that I'm very excited for. Fe- February 25th, they're that's fighting. A, that's a great fight. Um, yeah. What is that? What else? It, we can't pretend to know. No. There's like, not too much to say at 205, to be honest with you. Yeah. There's no I, I hope it's Jamal Hill. I don't. Ah, I, I do think that Yuri probably beats him. Yeah. It's. Ah, I hate think, saying do you that. Do think Goliath hate... beats Jamal Hill? Let's start there. Do you think do you think Megamed and Goliath beats Jamal Hill? I think I would have said yes before the last Yan fight. Okay. Not, okay let, let's say if it was like Ankalaev was here yeah. and Jamal Hill was here. Yeah. After their both last two fights, it's like it switched. It switched and like a little like a little I, more. I feel like Jamal Hill will win that. So you think Jamal Hill beats Magomed and Goliath? Ah, I don't know though, man. <laughs> it's tough. I think so though. Do you think Goliath beats Jan Blahovic if they rematch? I do. Okay. Do you think Yuri Prohoshka comes back pre December? Yeah. Okay. Given he's a madman, yeah. Do you think Jamal Hill fights before Yuri comes back? Once? From now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you would assume it's Ankalaev, yeah. So you think Jamal beats Ankalaev. And then And then Yuri beats Jamal Hill. <laughs> so you're on my pick. <laughs> I don't know, but I, but I feel like you're just you're boxing me in, bro. You're fuck you're boxing me in. That's like, what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't know, but here's the chance. Let's move on. We Let's do it. There's not too much to talk. Last about. weight class and the tr- most trash weight class as far as the men's divisions yeah. are concerned. Heavyweight. Heavyweight weight class. The only fight worth anything, in my opinion, is the one that's happening. John Jones. John Jones or Cyril Gunn. Yeah. Especially now with Francis gone. You know, can I give you my take real yeah, quick? Yeah, go for it. I, I think it's really just a, a story of those two. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, I love Cyril Gaon. Yeah. You know, I really like that guy. Like, he's my favorite in the weight class probably, aside from, like, um, Tai Tuivasa, of course, our yeah. boy. Um, that's she. That's she. Um, yeah, I think Stipe is like a novelty at this point. Yeah. I don't think he's a serious guy. I, I know he's... Yeah, I've never been... I, it's kind of crazy to me that that's who people consider to be the heavyweight GOAT. It, it, he earned it, you know, for what it's worth. You that, know what I'm saying? He won the trilogy with Daniel Cormier. He won the... Like, it, whatever. It's, it's, Daniel Cormier was, fu- was fat at that point. But is is, I bro. think Sergei Pavlovich is a really, really, really legit guy. Problem. And problem. he's a problem in that weight class. I think Curtis Blades is legit, and I think the buck kind of stops there. You know, I think it's it's I think it's really Cyril Gunn, John Jones, Sergey Pavlovich, Curtis Blades. I think those are the only four even in the conversation at this point of this by the end of the year. Yeah. Yes, being the champ. Um, I'm gonna go with the goat, man. I I I can't go against John Jones. Okay. I think John Jones is the heavyweight champ by the end of the season. So we kind of altered. Like the way we've been doing this, yeah. And it went from just like talking about the division and then throwing the champion in to like giving the champion, yeah. The which is kind of weird, but I'm down. Oh, sorry yeah. if I just jumped into no, it. No, no, it's fine. I'm, I've I'm, been doing that for the last few too. Yeah. I'll let you guys know this is our first time doing this. Deal with it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yes, I think John Jones is the champ by the end of it. I agree. As far as who can be champion, yes, it's those four guys. You're 100 percent right. I also think it's crazy, like, heavyweight to light heavyweight is, like, it's only one weight class, but it's, like, the hardest. Well, Imagine yeah. being double champ at light heavy and heavy. You can't. Right. DC did it. I know, but, but like. 205, because it's 205 and then it's 265. It's a 60-pound difference. That's insane. It's not 10 or 15 yeah, yeah. pounds. Um, anyways, I think John Jones beats Cyril Gunn. I think if it ends up being Stipe after that, I think that's a free title defense for John or I think or, that's what they end Cyril up Gunn. doing, yeah. Yeah, or Cyril Gunn. Whoever wins yeah. that fight is going to beat Stipe. Um, the only people that can be champion is, like you said, Gon, Stipe, John Jones, Pavlovich, and Curtis Blades. Yep. That, that's where it ends this year. Um, I'm super duper interested to see what Tom Aspinall looks like. Me when too. he comes back from injury. What a here. shame, man. Yeah, me too. it sucks, dude. Yeah. Um, but, but let's find out where he's at, because he was looking awesome for a while. Um, besides that, I'm, I'm super interested in Jonathan Almeida. Kind of oh, want to see how far thank he you. climbs up. Thank you for bringing that up. For that's sure. that's the only guy 
Oh, that's the only prospect, let's say, that I have outside of my top 10. Yeah. Or outside the top 10, where I would even, like, I think it's even worth mentioning. Yeah. Because he's, like, dude, there aren't many true athletes in this weight class, sadly. Mm-hmm. And I think he is so explosive and so strong and so powerful, and he's a true athlete. I think he's the only guy that I could actually see doing something outside of the top 10. It's John Gone and then him. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, also, really quickly, reversing for a second, he also fits in that 205 category. Yeah. He might be an up and cover at 205. We don't know what he's Or 185. Yeah. Probably, probably not anytime soon. But. I, I think 185 is not happening anymore. Yeah. That's what he started, though. Yeah, but yeah. whatever. Um, I think Volkov had a fight, fight book not, you know, a couple days ago. I unfortunately don't remember who that's against. If you could find that out. Yeah, I'm going to find that for you. Um, whatever. I don't see Volkov climbing back into it. Uh, you know, Derek Lewis has a main event coming. No, up. I think he had his chances. Yeah. I, I uh, oh, against Romanov, actually, dude. Yeah, Romanov, fine. You know, whatever. None of those guys is moving in the top five. Nah. Um, self-explanatory. I think John Jones wins it. I think he beats Cyril Gunn. I think he ends up beating Stipe. And I think we end the year. Or actually, I don't think he even fights Stipe. Be honest with you. Who? John Jones. This year? Yeah, I don't see John Jones fighting twice after three Steve years. has got to retire game. soon, man. Yeah. Yes. I think John Jones. I would just say, as MMA fans, we would be blessed if we get a, a year this year where we get to see a Connor and a John Jones fight. Yeah. I would be a happy, be awesome. I would be a happy MMA fan. That'd be awesome. Um, what else you got? That's really it, man. I think we've gone on long enough. Yeah. Um, Thank, thank you so much for tuning in. If you did, if you didn't, maybe do don't. it next time <laughs> or don't. I mean, hey, who are we to tell you? Um, like and subscribe, not to be that guy, but smash that like button for real. And on Instagram, please, the 107 mma Yep. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing this for fun. We're going to keep doing it. Um, we'd love to have you with us. And, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. He's Dino Bam Bam. I'm Dino DS. Signing off. What's your nickname? Oh, MMA Youngboy. I apologize. <laughs> MMA Youngboy. All right, guys. Take care. See you guys. Thanks.